Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Amazon European Masters. For those of you a little bit confused why we're not initialized Nymera, as much as I'm sure we wish we were, it is actually Viper and Gulbog taking you through the final three games of the day. Gulbog, how are you doing? It's been a little while. I mean, we, we, we got to cast a lot yesterday when you had to emergency, uh, emergency jump into the K-Corp series. But outside of that, it's been good. We have three really good games coming up in front of us. Yeah, we have three exceptionally exciting games. But before we look forward to those ones, we're going to quickly look back at the one that was just covered. Our letter losing out to Bison's. And I know that you're really hyped for this one because we've actually got an interview with Gooby coming up for you. So we can talk through the victory, the first win for Bison's. In fact, there he is in the jungle, Gooby. Massive congratulations on the win. How does it feel to get the team on the board? Um, thank you very much. It obviously feels great to finally take a game. I think we were a little bit destroyed after the two losses, but we tried a lot of things. So we just concluded if we go back to where we want to play, then we are just going to start picking up wins. So yeah, it feels good. <laughs> just look at him, man. He's been so he's been so humble, man. How you been, buddy? It's been a long while. You finally start picking up these victories. How how do you feel in today's game, really? Like, because you were talking to me, and you're like, you know what? I need to go back and carry. How does it feel like in misfortune? Because it still looked a little shaky. It still look, looked a little slow. Are you content with today's game? Um, to be honest, I, I'm not really satisfied with how we played. I, there's still a lot of mistakes we're making, but I'm content with. Um, we, with how we played the, the map and uh, how slow we acknowledged we had to play since we were just scaling. Um, but yeah, as I told you the other day, I want to carry again. So back on 80 carries is, uh, <laughs> is where I want to be right now. So. Yeah, so like a lot of people have been talking about you guys because you're one of the teams that was, you know, really hyped up into the tournament as well. Not so much always through your play style, but mostly your unique kind of drafts. Did you feel like you have to show more unique drafts as well then when you came to the European Master? Like, did you feel like you got too creative in some of the other games? Um, or do you still stand by what you had uh, coming into them, even though you lost? No, I, I think we had a lot of fake info from scrims about how what was good in the meta. Um, and a lot of people are just copying G2's draft not right now with On, Java, and Victor, this kind of stuff, the Holy Trinity, uh, which is really stable blind picks and really stable in the meta. Front to back, is it's just the king comp you can play, and it's the, it's the best meta to play front to back uh, right now. So we just need to adapt to that as well, and I think we will be able to match up with the UL and LDLC as well. But uh, no, we don't need to pick anything weird. I think we can match up with everything if we with everyone if we just uh, play the same thing. I would say. I love that to hear the idea of not necessarily needing to go for exactly what is the cookie cutter, having those picks up your sleeve, but knowing how to play the meta is also super important. So now that you're finished up with that first round, Robin, looking towards next week and the games that you're going to have there, is there anything that yourself and your team are going to go away and look to do, look to improve mainly before you come back to try and qualify out of this pretty tough group? Um. Yeah, I mean, definitely, as I said, we need to just uh, start playing the meta as well, um, which is probably what we're going to look to do. But obviously, we will always have our have our adaptive uh, draft style, uh, which is probably the ace of our sleeve that we always have something. If, if they pick something that we can expose and draft or something. But um, yeah, as I said, um, just drafting more Standard is probably what we need to practice right now, even though it sounds really weird. But uh, yeah, that's probably what we like right now. <laughs> well, it seems weird when you have a team cup like a team like this, right? Where they're like, well, when we finally have to play normal League of Legends, the, that's that's kind of what we have to learn now. It just kind of tells the the tale of the split they've had. Because like, did you feel like the momentum you got throughout building up through playoffs got halted a little bit moving into the break between waiting for play-ins and all that? Um, or do you still feel like you can ride the momentum now from one game and then take it through all the way to the groups? Um, I feel like what we mainly focused on uh, in, in our low bracket run was that we have to have a stable mental um, going into finals and all of these kind of things. So we didn't really practice a lot of uh, new things and a lot of how we want to play with, with the meta. So that's where we need to pick up right now. and. Uh, Obviously, we had the worst worst read we could possibly have this uh, week of scrims. Uh, but in the next week to come, I think 
we we will keep the momentum from this game and and just smash it on the last day of groups. Amazing, great to hear. And I guess the final question for you before I let you go is, are you and your team confident that you're going to make it out of this group? <laughs> yeah, we're confident, of course. We, are, we all believe in, the, in the, the Bison stream, the miracle run right now, but we believe. I like that. It was. It's always just been set up for the miracle run. It was all scripted for the entire time. Gooby, massive congratulations on the win today and good luck in your matches next week. Thank you. Amazing. Great to hear from a player, obviously, that you know very well, very dear to your heart. We're watching it back. I say backstage. We were watching it in a Discord <laughs> pool at our respective houses. And you were getting very hyped over some of these plays. We're about to watch a few highlights. But why don't you just talk us through what was getting you so excited? Well, first off, that's the buyers. The first team I ever coached when I started my coaching career before I became a caster was with Gooby. His and, I, uh, his and my team was the same, right? But outside of that, it's just the fact that Bison is a fun team to watch. This game, I feel like just didn't really display that. And I think some of it goes back to the fact that, as you just heard him saying, they're trying to play more standard. They're trying to go for front to back. Uh, a lot of the G2-esque style as well is where you, you get the Jarvan, um, even getting the Corky uh, with the outrange potential as well. Super good for the team fighting potential. And then you just take it slow. You just know that you can outscale your opponent through the differential in the composition. And that's kind of what we watch. So they weren't really as proactive as they probably could have been. And you heard Kubi say that as well just in the interview now. He's satisfied with the victory. He's not too satisfied with how, of course, they got it. They could have played better. Um, and I think that summed the game up pretty well. They have you know, uh, a pretty strong uh, and long run ahead of them if they want to make it out of the group. They are relying on Unicorns of Love losing a couple of games as well. Luckily for them, they just lost their DLC. Um, so I feel like this group, um, it can only get spicy as we move on into next week as well. Gabo's attempted great escape. I was rooting for him every step, but he's only got short legs and at the end does go down. But for Atleta, <laughs> of course, 0-3 coming out of the first round. Robin not looking too great for them on the score lines. Have put in some decent performances. So hopefully they'll be coming back swinging next leap. But that corky mid lane, I was questioning it a little bit when it was drafted through. But as you say, that range of that damage with all the gold as well, looking pretty decent. Honestly, it's just due to the fact that, you know, you can outrage him. You just need to survive laning phase. And when mm. you re um, rely on the rockets, well, <laughs> we've seen what the damage can be. Well, let's move on to the next game because there's going to be some damage thrown around on this one. Gamer Legion up against X7 Esports. And with this Gamer Legion lineup, Sakura, Danka, Essek, Jinjo, and Wisdom, they can do a lot of work. We've already seen it from them in the first day of groups, able to take a easy, a, a very straightforward win over Team Phantasma. Up against X7, Jaeger, Haru, Tempt, Nata, and Gasing, also able to take a very, very easy win up against Keiko. I feel like that, that, like, in terms of who was most dominant in, in terms of beating out their opponent, X7 was definitely up there. Mm. Gamer Legion, they lacked a little bit against the Greek team. I feel like their objective control was really, really good. Um, but a lot of their plays got really messy, especially towards that bot side with all of the skirmishes that came through all the time. Well, we're going to be jumping into Chaps. Let's see what is going to be built for these two rosters. Game Legion on the blue side coming out of the Prime League, X7 Esports on the red coming out of the NLC, and it's going to be no Rakan for Kasing, who put in a really dominant performance against Keiko. Yeah, I think both these teams have a very different stylistic as well in terms of how they play. From the side of X7, it's very much about playing through the pressure of Haru and Temp. Like, mm. they completely gap um, Seiken and 113 in their game, and they, like, the early game was really slow for them. X7 just spent that trying to mitigate the pressure that came out from k -Corp. and then when you hit the mid game, that's what they started to look for, uh, for plays through the jungle and mid lane synergy. Whereas Gamer Legion, they were very much about applying pressure down towards the bot side. Like, they were using the Misfortune together with the Renata, you know, double AD or double range lane down there to apply pressure, come with, with some ganks every now and then. Um, so these two teams, they play uh, through two people, but they do it differently. Absolutely. And with that misfortune, Zeri ban from X7, you can see that they're looking to take away some options from Jinjo, the Jason and Ricard just thrown around. Of course, Jaeger, a player that wasn't necessarily spoken about in the same breath as a lot of these other X7 players going into this tournament. But on the Scion yesterday, he looked absolutely fantastic, able to weather the storm so frequently. Sakura is going to be a very interesting matchup for him, but we're just going to have to see if there's any more focus. And luckily, the J4 not going to be an option coming through for X7. 
It leaves open the volley bear right now where X7 is put in a position where either you ban it or we will probably take it because we know Haro has a priority on that mm -hmm. too. So I think that's probably the question in mind in terms of ban. Um, and I like the discussion as well through the two top laners. Both of them have really just defaulted to weak side as well where they don't get too many resources. And stylistically, both teams very much resemble each other in terms of what they like to do. Weak up top, play through a strong AD carry you can kite back with, but they do it differently. And speaking of strong AD carries, you know, they're just going to say it. Take away the Jinx here. Three of them are already banned. Sire is still a possibility, Ophelia is still a possibility, but I think the volley ban question, it has to get picked up just due to the fact that Haro, you know, he loves playing it too. And they had a great game on it yesterday. The question being, what do X7 think they have as a solution to the volley ban? Think about the Zinzao, of course, a really powerful pickup, but there's plenty of other lanes, plenty of other priority. Maybe they look to just grab a Marksman, look to get the opportunity to grab the Zarya or the Ophelios, as you mentioned, get their pick of the litter. Yeah, seeing a Lee on a first pick would be a little bit, little bit interesting. Usually we see them go for a support counter pick down towards the third pick instead, or even down towards the second ban rotation. So I feel like X7, they're kind of breaking the mold a little bit with the way they're rotating their champions here. And I think it really just comes down to the fact that they don't want to blind pick that AD carry. Like, if they feel confident, mm. confident in it, they'll probably just pick it on three. Because um, if they don't, pick their AD carry in the first rotation. Three of them has already been banned, right? So if you go into the second ban phase, Nata's champ pool will have to go down to, you know, uh, different areas of that champion ocean. And that's going to be a big question because it gives Game of Legion the opportunity to go into that slightly reduced pool and pick out what they will. That being said, the counter pick is very valuable. And with the Ezreal being considered, that could be an interesting option. You've got to imagine that the support will likely come through from Gamer Legion as well, but it will with the Zarya. That's the go-to here. Yeah, I feel like either you just match it with the Nautilus here, or you can go for the Thresh angle if you want to. Thresh just haven't seen the biggest success just yet in terms of how he has been piloted. A um, little more risky. I feel like the main engage you get from um, a Nautilus would be really nice. Um, but you can also put them in a position where it's like either you counter pick this Nana on three, or you pick your AD carry. So if you counter pick top lane now on three, well, then you will get your champion pool of AD carries diminished. And if you don't pick the AD carry, well, then they can start banning out now counters. What will X7 do? They've been put into a corner. They've... This could be a bot. This could be mid. This could be top. This is a triple flex. We've seen this loads of times, actually, um, throughout different regions. So what really springs to mind is LVP already, of course, with uh, Bison just before as well. Uh, but we have seen this champion uh, in different lanes. This is going to be very, very interesting, actually. A little bit of a curveball for X7. It is a what I just bit. said was like, you know what? They've been very good drafting standard. Then all of a sudden, why, why make it standard? Why be boring? You know, let's let's throw in a little bit Soraka. I'm very interested to see where this one ends up. I'm thinking about the players, and I think maybe Nart is the one that I'm most likely like looking at as the Soraka connoisseur, but of course, Tempt and Jaeger have their own skills as well. The set will be taken off the table away from Gormaz and Wisdom. He's played set support a couple of times in relatively recent games, so going to be taking that one away. And of course, it's flexible, but with the Nar already there, you've got to imagine it's unlikely, and the Aurelia is also going to be removed. Yeah, Vistam's also been super happy about the Nautilus. At least that's what he played a lot in playoffs as well. Um, found a lot of core engages there. Sometimes he get a little bit too over aggressive on it, but that's kind of the fine line that he is walking as a support. You know, we know it from great stars like Hillisang as well. There's a fine line between a great outplay and the biggest int we've seen in our entire life, right? So it's really just what they're walking through. And interesting bands to come through here. It's Blitzcrank. This draft, it's really blowing my mind. This is not something I anticipated walking into this one. I don't know what the coaching staff of X7 did between yesterday and today. I'm not sure what like two viewer streams they've been watching, but they've certainly come up with some interesting ideas in terms of bans and picks. Of course, they are looking, I was going to say towards their solo lane, Soraka could go there. The Lucian is actually going to be taken off the table for Nata and a little bit of a flexible pickup as well. So now X7 showing their hands a little bit with this next pick to show if they want to get a marksman, if they want to go for one of those solo laners, how are they going to leave this one open for the counter pick? Yeah, this is just where, what, what do you want to reveal, right? Either you keep it in two lanes, like top and mid, or mid and uh, top, or I, the only one I see not reasonable here is blind picking your mid laner. I think we're either going to see an AD carry or top laner, and it will just be the top laner. We were just speaking about Jaeger, who had, you know, recently defaulted to weak side in the mm. finals, and what we've seen so far in the European Masters. This time around, just opts in for the Trindemir, who, if he gets ahead into the Nama shop, can front him down. Absolutely. I mean, there's a very small world where this could go mid. We've seen it before, but it's much, much less likely. 
So it'll be a case of Gamer Leech and they're going to have to pick up a support. They're going to have to go for their mid laner. The Ari made it all the way through, so we'll be locked in. It's a brave pickup, though, because stuff like the Vigar is available if they want to move that Soraka down bot. Yeah, we just saw that yesterday as well with by first drafting where like if you take champions who only rely on the short range they're really going to be struggling and so far mm. three of these champions are very short range um if you go lethality side of course you get to play around with the extra range from your q instead and not so much your auto attacks um but let's see what gamer legion decides to round this one out with they actually opt in for the enchanter down towards the bot side and with this, you can pretty much put Soraka down there as well if you want to and just go for a counter pick on the mid lane and just keep um, the Soraka for Nata. Very interesting pickup so far, but let's see uh, what cards X7 <laughs> have dealt themselves here. Where where do they throw these cards onto the table? And they're looking to the Vladimir. Okay. That doesn't reveal absolutely anything. I imagine that will be going into the hands of Tempt with Soraka going bot. I think that would be the most logical case, uh, and it's uh, it's interesting. I've not seen Vladimir in a very long time. We got to see him one time in the NLC. I do believe it was piloted uh, by MNS uh, back then as well. Um, it's an interesting champion that can still function in these skirmish heavy team fights where it's all about the scaling and still function very well into short range champions. So mm. against a lot of game allegiance compositions, um, he's actually quite fine. My main concern with X7 right now is that if they fall behind the curve, there's not a lot of comeback potential through these champions like Soraka falling behind, and if she's not able to play for her solo laners well that's essentially two useless picks you're going to be having now if the solo laners fall behind um so there's a lot of pressure on the solo laners of the x7 now. i'm quite interested though with x7 this draft is very clearly saying we're gonna play through mid and top these are the guys that are going to carry us our bot lane we know that's where Kima legion is strong we know that's what they want to do we're just going to absorb pressure we're playing leona soraka you're not going to be able to take us down we're sitting back we're farming up we're healing up so I'm interested to see if that will pay off for them. But as you mentioned, if Gamer Legion managed to get themselves a lead, it could be very, very problematic from the team from the Isle of White. Uh, yeah, man. They... Isle of Man, sorry. Yeah, the, I feel like there's some good playmaking potential for, in the early game for Gamer Legion. You know, you have the charm set up from the Ari with the Volibear as well. If you're able to apply pressure in the mid lane, then you can move it elsewhere on the map. That's really where Gamer Legion gets, in a, gets to be in a position where they can strike um, onto X7. So jungle tracking, once again, between Danka and uh, Haru is actually going to be quite pivotal, at least for the first two clears of the first five minutes. Um, ice on the junglers. We have found ourselves onto the rift for our fourth game of the evening. First game that we're behind the microphones for. Gamer Legion on the blue side, X7 for the red side. And Gorbog, just a general expectation question, I guess, to start you out is, what are we expecting to see in the early game? What do you, what do you want to see from these two teams? I think from the side of X7, you, we're not really waiting for much. You, they want to continue to play the game that they played yesterday, and yesterday against K-Cob as well, which is just respond to the players that are coming out from the team who wants to commit to the players in the early game. So, for example, if you get the tracking done on Danga, he wants to commit to a play on broadside, side, for example, you have your bot lane in a position where they'll be able to not go down um, and how is going to be there to shadow because you completely outscale them on side with this Trindamir. Nah cannot stand up to Trindamir if he gets ahead. And that's going to be the fall inside for Gamer Legion. So I'm expecting X7 to just play a very responsive play in the early game. And from the side of Gamer Legion, I want to see them to be aggressive with the volume. I want to see them apply as much pressure to X7 as possible, because if you can put them behind, if you can stall the side lane pressure, make sure Trinomir doesn't really get um, to get to a point where he gets to be explosive. Um, I think they get a lot of room to drive around within this early game. And we saw how good they were around the early objectives just yesterday. X7 already giving a lot of respect in this bot side, letting Jinjo and Vizdom move in, and they're being completely zoned away, which when you're playing Soraka Leona, the power, the damage that you have in the early game isn't super strong. And of course, even though you've got Soraka with the healing, it takes a little bit of time for you to be able to start safely using it. So it's just due to the fact you need to hit that Starlight or whatever the Q is called first to really hit that region through. And uh, they're balancing around that real nicely from the side of the Gamer Legion bot lane. Um, they should be able to just stack up a slow push in this instant. They can go for a crash on three, try to go in and counter jungle Haru if that's what they're looking for. Um, but I feel like the move is once again on Gamer Legion in the early game to commit to players, especially through bot side pressure. Of course, moving into this mid lane as well, Tempt versus Essek. The Vladimir, maybe a standout pick from the pick and ban who as you mentioned, we'll do pretty well into this lower range matchup. You've got to imagine. It's not one that I'm acutely familiar with, it must be said. But are you expecting 
maybe X7 to play around this one a little bit more, or is it just going to be a case of taking the pressure and getting strong? I, that, that, definitely the latter one, uh, 100%. I don't see a world where you go for solo kill pre-6 at least, but there will be mm. kill pressure. Here we see what I just talked about. It's the crash yes. on the third wave, and because of that, you could go into and try and counter jungle Haru with Volley Bear. Should be able to win out on it, but Haru's clear. It's just fast enough, and he's able to get out. But Danka's going to follow him towards his wolves, and Visdom is in the wings as well, so Zinzao might be able to get his buff, but won't be able to properly contest the wolf camp as well. Not going to be able to grab anything as Dank is able to stride backwards. But this is going to be a little bit of respite in the bot side for Nata and Kasing to try and farm up a wave under their tower. But it will also give a cheetah recall to Jinjo, who may look to pick up something like a cull. Yeah, I feel like Gamer Legion on the first three minutes there with the waves, how they played it, got the most out of that situation. Um, but as X7, you're not necessarily sad about this either. Um, losing just one camp here is not all of a sudden going to swing this game around. <laughs> I'm just putting some damage down in the mid lane, showing off what he can do. And of course, has that ability to sustain a little bit because even at the early stages, taking down those minions and using that Q will be able to transfuse a little bit of health back into the Vladimir. Top lane somewhere we haven't talked about too much in terms of this game so far. Yeah, you're just going to be pushed in by the range. Not. I'm interested that we've seen the fleet footwork and the exhaust go down onto Sakura. Is that just to make sure that the Trinity is actually going to have to hold that one as it goes low, burning down with the Ignite First Blood solo bolo for Dempt. And that's what happens when you don't play against Vladimir in ages. You, you're just not familiar when he has lethal in lane. This time around, obviously, Temp knows it. He sees it, charges the E, flashes forward, Q on top of it with an Ignite. It's just as easy as that. And we talked about the explosive solo laners, X7, already under the board, four minutes into the game. Yeah, doesn't need any assistance. You said, hey, look, oh, actually in the bot side, though. Looks like there's an engage coming through for Kasing. Wisdom's going low, actually, in Soraka, showing there's a bit of kill pressure, but the shield might be enough dashing forward. Kasing will go down, but they do exchange the kills, and now it's Jinjo chasing Narda away. X7 on the offensive. So support for support gets that kill. If Jinju was the one who would have picked up Kasing, I definitely would have called Worth for Gamer Legion, um, as that would have just been a too aggressive th tra th trade uh, from the side of X7. But you can see what the bot lane wants to do there. The CC comes through from the Leona, while Nata is uh, piling down the silence and then into the root afterwards. So if you get caught by one, you're just not going to be able to make it out, but let's have a look at the replay once again. Q bar timing up, Temp, he sees the window, just starts timing the E as soon as the Reds comes through. Here you see it, and that's the window. Ash kick, she's not ready for it. Look at the electrocute, look at all the damage. One auto attack and the ignite, it's just going to do it. Danka was even there, but then we move into the bot side. You think, hey, Soraka Leona, maybe not going to go super aggressive, but Wisdom stepping up for the poke. And Kasing just sees his window and takes it. Yeah, you can see it. Yeah, it's once again center blade into the stun, uh, into just the silence and wisdom. Um, just checked a little bit in lane here, making sure that hey, you cannot step up as far as lane in this lane as you would have want to. Um, really, just testing the damage real quick there, uh, with a very clutch shield to come through, and of course a flash for Jinju to secure the root onto Kasing. Unfortunately, not the kill. Yeah, so it's support for support grabbing kills there. I mean, X7 have two supports down this bot lane, but not as the farmer and. Gamer Legion using the opportunity on the resets even after not necessarily getting the kills that they've wanted to start up the dragon. Members of X7 are in the neighborhood though. Haru is moving towards it. It should go down short order as Dank is able to grab that one and flash over the wall to safety. So they get the objective and they get out without losing a map. Yeah, pretty good from Gamer Legion. This is something they have been really good at doing already in European Masters, displaying their early objective control. And once again, it comes through that bot side, right? It comes through this lane who's able to push in the wave, uh, makes moves. That's why we saw Haro uh, get counter jumbled in the early game. That's why we see them have priority uh, on the Drake as well. Temp's just going to hang around in the mid lane once again, back to the status quo. We've got about a minute until the Rift Herald is going to move on to the Rift. X7 haven't yet moved. Neither lanes are really moved up towards that objective. Are we going to see a lane swap, do you think? Or is it just going to be a case of junglers and top laners scrapping over this one? I think it's definitely the latter one. And I think we can start moving up Kasing if we want to. If Nata hits level 6, then you have the... Um what do you say, like, the luxury of having the Wish available mm. to you as well? Like, that fifth man, it's like reverse cannon barrage. It doesn't really do damage to the enemy team, but it's there to heal your teammates. And that is going to be very impactful because it allows Nata to be somewhere else but still impact a team fight. And obviously, it's not going to be the same as having the Soraka next to you able to throw those Ws down so frequently and so quickly. 
But across the map, it can change turn a 1v1 into a basically 2v1 very, very fast. So keep your eyes peeled for when Soraka does hit that 6. It might even be off this massive wave. And I wouldn't, honestly, I would have, I'm surprised that we're not seeing Vistam actually go for early recall here. He would get the tempo advantage on towards Kazing. Um, and they could try to gain more, some more priority on the top side of the map, but they opt in for the bot lane domination instead. Jinjo taking two tower shots as well. Um, and it just goes to show how willing they are to find their resources through this bot side as well. Uh, with a late reset though, and with the priority of the top lane and mid lane as well from X7, they will just be able to start the objective off of themselves. Yeah, Jaeger's been quietly gaining some priority up there, has picked himself up a I saw him parity now because he spent some time around that Rift Herald, but did have about a 10 farm lead now moving back up towards the top lane to pick up most of this wave, missing out on a couple of those because Sakura was just warding him away with autos. And of course, Tempt gaining some priority in the mid lane, a little bit less quietly with the solo first blood, but all the same looking very, very comfortable. So X7 with a good start, and we said we didn't want to see them falling behind. They've got themselves a small gold lead, and with the Rift Herald in pocket, that could go up even further. Yeah, and so far, X7, they've shown they are very happy to take a slow early game. I'd actually say this is one of the more exciting early games we see from X7, having two kills on the board already, um, and a solo kill from 10. Temp, nonetheless, just really showcasing once again why this guy is so good. Um, but I feel like it's Haru's time to shine soon as well, since he's the guy with the Rift Tail in hand. It's up to X7 to commit to another play, and it's really up to Gamer Legion to be able to stop it. Once again, jungle tracking will be so important. Most teams usually just go for the jungle tracking for the two mm. first clears, and then after that, they really just don't put all too much attention to it, um, which I think will be a little bit of a mistake, especially when the enemy has Haru. So I'm going to be a little bit careful because the charm time is going to go into Sanguine Pool to avoid Essek, who has used that ultimate diving on forward, gets ignited, so backs away. He's been a little bit careful about overextending. Meanwhile, in the bot side, though, Kazing is taking a whole heap of damage, doesn't have the solo flare on six just yet. So will be stumbling back. Danka moving forward towards Haru, who was down, shadowing, as you mentioned, but could be in a lot of trouble. Flash over the wall won't be followed. X7, burning resources to stay alive. Ah, but this is great from Gamer Legion. You take a look at the base control in this high river right now. Pink Ward in mid, Pink Ward towards the Pixel Bush standing there. They have to the scuttle crab. They are just facilitating their bot side just as they want to. But Tempt once again. It's a solo kill for the Vladimir Danka. Late to the punch, moving forward. We're just going to try and clear out the wave in the bot side, though. Nasty needs to be a little bit careful. Quite low, but his end plate will connect. The wish comes through to save Sarak's life as Kazing picks up the kill onto Jinjo. Visdom unable to do very much at all. X7, two kills across the map. Honestly, I'm really liking the Soraka pairing with the Leona because quite often you will see Tech Cleanse taking into the Leona. This time around though, even if you cleanse, you're still going to be stuck in the silence. And therefore, Jinju, he's not able to flash. He's not able to really get out of that sticky situation. Brilliantly played from X7. And Tempt once again getting a solo kill. Let's see. Gamer Legion though. Trying to find someone. Nard is going to stop the recall. Move back. Some Alcove Gaming is on the cards. As Kasing is going to try and ward away members of Gamer Legion. There's no one here to respond. Though. Everyone else recalled. And there goes Nard. Kasing may well go the exact same way. The old bit from Volibear shuts down the tower and shuts down the Leona. It's a double for Gamer Legion. Yeah, a little bit of a silver lining there for Gamer Legion to get some pressure back on the map. And, you know, with 15 seconds on towards the next Drake, they should be able to continue their objective skirmish unless of course that x7 just want to push in this mid lane opt in for a rift herald charge should just set up that mid lane turret for the next push if they'd like to i was gonna say with x7 of course we talk a lot about where the baron the herald should be put down and we often say bot lane because you know it's the hyper carry lane but with the soraka there a little bit less so haru needs to be somewhat careful Tempest's gonna follow through but the x7 bot lane is a little bit slow to the punish danka goes low gets the shield in the stasis though will go down shut down by Tempt as kasing dives off through haru needs to be careful the dragons actually do get a decent amount of damage turns towards it as his bot lane runs towards bot temp is gonna follow through the dragon is taken up by x7 they get the kill as well and that's all she wrote for now at least, now with the mid prior, they could do it, or with the ability to get the mid prior, they could continue to pressure it with the Rift Hail. Mm -hmm. And to go back to the question you had, most of the time, yes, we see teams use the Rift Hail towards the bot side, but X7 as a team, they're very fond of just using it mid lane. Even if it can't kill the turret, they want to use it mid lane to open that turret up first, and then they play towards the top side, or bot side, just the side lanes in general. And once again, it comes off Haru and Temp, like this duo, they're just so good. And freeze kills on Temp, two assists on Haru. Small misnomer because two of those solo kills have been from Temp. Nazi needs to be careful though, dodging away from those feathers. 
Jinjo still trying to get aggressive. Wisdom still trying to step up. But let's have another look at this fight in the river. That's the thing, because initially it's just Haru and Temp stepping up. Kissing and Nata is still coming off a death timer. So the two versus four walking in, zoning the fight. They know the ultimates are down for the Volibear. Beautiful solar flare from Kissing to split the team fight wide open. So Haru, he's just allowed to go onto the Drake and not go down as a casualty afterwards. Brilliantly played. Essek is back in the mid lane. Not had the best time on the Ari so far, proving that the Vladimir might be another one of the solutions a lot of teams have been looking for into this very, very dominant Fox in the mid lane. But coming up to 14 minutes, about 30 seconds until plates fall off. One last opportunity to try to sneak away some gold. Sneak in a gank, potentially as Temp going to go into the Sanguine Pool, having to use the Proto Battle as well, but takes a whole heap of damage. Charmed up, taken low. The Witch comes through, might save his life, but the Chains and the Ari is enough for the shutdown. As Kasing Haru moving forward, Jaeger's coming in from the top side as well. They might look to get the Revenge Kill and will take down Essek for his troubles. It's a one for one exchange as plates will fall off. But definitely not bad to get the shutdown. Very worth from the side mm. of Game Allegiance. He is slowing down X7 just a little bit. Especially since the Rocket Belt has been purchased from Temp. This is where in an isolated scenario, he will continuously have kill pressure on Essek. Um, so good to see that Game Allegiance, they're able to come together as a team, throw three members into the mid lane, make a shutdown come through. But they're going to need more than that as well. They need to be, to be able to get some sort of pressure in another lane because so far X7 is the one driving the tempo. Yes, the gold lead is fairly even between the teams, but no one from X7 is or from Gamer Legion is currently making a move on towards the objectives. Um, and I think it'll have to come through from that bot lane. It's kind of been that better bread and butter um, to roll through them. And I mean, for the bot lane, they haven't been able to dominate the same way that we've necessarily seen from them in games, in playoffs, of course, in the Prime League. And then yesterday, had an excellent performance down there as well on the Misfortune, notably. But so did Nata from X7, both of them picking up that champion. Jinjo should be able to secure this bot lane tower with them in support. And Danka giving them a lot of attention in the wings. But now on the top side, though, Sakura might be the sacrificial lamb. There's four members up here as Jaeger going to move forward, gets the slow diving on forward, has the ultimate, remember, so he can tag up the tower. So Flair goes wide, but this Nata is not long for this one. The question is, can everyone get out alive? Jaeger <laughs> going to be able to get away with all the healing in the world as X7 pull off the dive. You can, uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure they can. Look at that healing. But good response from Gamer Legion. They go mm. for the cross map instead, picking up a tier two. That's actually super worth it, considering that it gives you 600 gold. Yes, on the side of X7, they will be able to pick up the Herald instead. But considering the moves or response you could make to the aggression of X7, I think Gamer Legion, they definitely went for the only choice they could have. Yeah, that makes sense. Even... Yeah, and breaking over the bot side is going to be really good fighting around the dragons, which are to come up. It's going to be Mountain Soul this game. So not the most flashy big dragon that we ever see in our lives. But does either of these teams really like that extra defensive stats? No one's ever going to complain about extra defensive stats. Um, I think, you know, just due to how the scaling game works as well in League, like the earlier Mountain Drake you can get, the better. Um, mm. cause especially if the enemy haven't opted in for any Magic Pen or Attack Damage Penetration, Lethality, you name it, right? Um, mid lane great, Everfrost. Yeah, it gets on top of Kasinga, who's going to flash away from the Tether. Nata moving forward once again, but there's no further support from X7. But Game Illusion unable to make that pick stick. So they expand the Spirit Rush there. So that's going to be an ultimate down for the common Drake fight. If they kill off Kasing there, they would have taken away the primary ray of getting Vision for X7. Uh, and that pretty much would have put X7 in a really bad position to contest this. Not uh, going to be caught up by Dank and the Feathers go up. They come back down. Damage onto Zaraga. Will go low. Gets away for a second longer, but the Volleyball Ultimate trading one for one as the rest of X7 maraud forward, try to clear out the minions, but won't be able to find Gamer Legion there already gone. Yeah, and I'm not sure X7's going to be able to, or Gamer Legion Ooh, rather is going to be able to contest this one now. Yeah, going in on to Essek. Jincho is going to be there for support, but needs to get the land back. Can't find it. Haru flashing forward, gets the winds come lightning, and Ari becomes toast as X7 pick up another move towards Dragon. And that was the Spirit Rush down. We just saw it before. They tried to get a pick with it. They weren't able to obtain it. But they're getting desperate now from Gamer Legion. And because of that, they're making mistakes. Attempt in the mid lane just sliding on through to pick up the Minion Wave and stop any kind of push. While the rest of X7, by the rest, I mean Haru and Kasing, because they're the only two on that side of the map right now. 
will be moving towards this dragon. But Sakura's moving forward. Game Legion have support, but Tempt on the side looking for Jinjo gets so much damage down. The ultimate burned through, but now Tempt is in a whole heap of trouble. The flank was his tomb. As X7 move away, the dragon was secured, but now they need to try and get out. The Nara is going to follow through. Gets a nice boomerang down, but there's no follow up to it. X7 get the objective, but they lose their mid laner. Yeah, a little aggressive from Tem there, feeling himself a little too much. He was sitting on two items. Game of Legion, they may be able to get Nata here as well. Yeah, Nata overstepping, because Sing moving forward gets the Solar Flare Haru on the side. It might have been a bait all along, but the Nara into the wall secures the Saraga. Nice flash from Wisdom sees him out as Dank is coming on forward. Haru dumping back in, but that was probably a mistake, because Sing wants nothing to do with this as Game of Legion get another shutdown and keep themselves in biting this. I'm not sure what the forward process of Gamer Legion was there. It seemed a little bit of greedy to think that you can still obtain the bot side map here after you lost your member in Tem, then you lost Nata, then you still tried to take mm. the fight with Haro as well. All the meanwhile, Jaeger is on the top side, clearing out a tier 2 turret. If you just took the 1 for, uh, one for 0 trade initially with Tem, but you still got the tier 2 on the top side, you could have called Worth since you got the Drake, but since you had three members just walking in and dying like that, Gamer Legion, they remain competitive. Gold pretty much on parity. Game state looking fine for both sides. Which we haven't been able to say too much here at the Amazon European Masters. But let's have another look at this extended play where Tempt couldn't make it happen. Yeah, and it's just nice having the cleanse as well to get rid of the Ignite. Wisdom coming in with a clutch sealed. And as soon as Tempt has slashed forward, Rocket Belt used his entire kit there. You just toast, right? You, you don't have your pool. You don't have any cooldowns just yet. Uh, and here comes the overext uh, overextension. They're going through with the reset, and I can understand the thought process of stopping it since you want uh, Jaeger to continue with the push. But going forward with the fighting afterwards, I really feel like it's a mistake. You have two members in the mid lane from Gamer Legion who will be able to join the fight very quickly. Haru then fancies himself another fight, and I think he is dead as soon as that tether has hit. So going in, not the biggest mistake, but taking that fight initially was definitely the, uh, the turning point, um, at least in terms of getting Gamer Legion some gold back into the game. And a very nice flash from Vizdom in that play kept him alive and helped Gamer Legion. They're moving towards this tower now. Kasing and Haru on the backside, but they haven't got that much support. Nata is there with the silence as members from X7 are finally turning up. A Sakura on the flank. Jinjo goes low. Jaeger looking for a target. And pops that ghost. Dank is in trouble. Haru dives through. Kasing's there as well. The first little fight goes over onto the Zaya as Vizdom tries to keep Volley Bear alive. Will be able to do so. Nice start for two, but Sakura might not be able to find his way out. He won't as he pulls Jaeger now in full chase mode, looking towards Essex. Taking a decent amount of does need to be careful on the Trindamin. No ults were available, but Nata's providing the healing, providing the shielding, providing the support as Diego cuts down the mid lane at X7. Turn the fight around where they just lost one. They pick up an even bigger advantage. Oh, yeah, and it was a four versus five for the first 10 seconds, but Gamer Legion, they just weren't able to properly pilot that team fight. X7, on the other hand, they played it almost to a T. And how frustrating is it to see a Trindemir go down in Undying Rage, not being able to kill him, and then have Nata just fully heal him up afterwards? Let's take a look at the replay, because it starts out with a turn initially from Gamer Legion. But a three-man silence from Nata is actually so crucial in letting Kasing lives. And he's already back to full HP because of the Soraka. It's absolutely crazy what Nata can do when he's untouched and kept alive. And even with some decent plays from Game Legion, Sakura with the nice ultimate into two. Just keep watching Jaeger. You think, huh, no ultimate. He's overextending a little bit. But Nata's like, hold up, let me just half heal you. And Vizdom now in a lot of trouble. Jinjo's there as well, but Tempt will just be able to slide back. The shield Oof. was just enough to keep Vizdom alive. But it was very, very close. Oh, and now with the support... Force back to the base. There is an opportunity where you just start this, not necessarily to take it, but to bait enemy members mm. into you. And uh, that seems like the thought process as well, but they're going to be spotted out by ping. Yeah, spotted out. And Haru, the only one to commit to actually hitting the Baron, is going to back away. Members of X7 might be looking for something. Yeah, he goes low. Sakura moving forward. He's got his Narbar full. So could look for the engage. X7 in a bit of trouble. Needs to dive away. Ultimate to keep Tempt out of harm's reach. As Gassing able to go over the wall. Nadra, of course, keeping him alive. The Charm Land, though, on to the Leona on the other side, though. Tempted Jaeger keeping the rest of Gamer Legion busy. Not able to follow through with any damage as neither team loses any members. It's a 5v5 in the mid lane now. Sakura trying to keep the engagement rolling. They can't find too much except for a little bit of poke horror on the flank, though. Could be looking for something as Gamer Legion keep moving forward. 
And you can see the damage now coming out from Jinju. They're just playing around the feathers all the time. But they need to be careful. Oh, the engage comes through. Tempt needs to be careful. He's pretty low. Nacho on the side. Doesn't have that much help. Throws down the wish. The first kill goes to Jinju. Haru is dead. Going up in the air. Back down. Jaeger still alive. Undying rage as he spins away. The healing from Zaraga is going to be limited by her own health bar. It's just going to be a 1 for 0 for Gamer Legion. And they've got priority on the next Drake. Especially with Haru dead, this surely should go over to Gamer Legion, stopping the soul point to come through from X7. A great team fight, uh, especially from Gamer Legion to come through in a moment where they've just not been able to win even the four versus fives. This time around, though, with Jinju being the main damage dealer, they find the kill. And that's what happens when Jinju's kept alive because a couple of the last fights we've seen from X7, they've been able to get on top of the Zarya even through the cleanse, even through the ultimate, and take her down because, hey, you've got two items for your fully stacked mirror mana. Eclipse as well. The lethality is going to be no oh, yeah. slouch. So Jinjo, definitely public enemy number one. Yeah, and uh, it's difficult for the backline to reach him as well just because he's got that self-peel. He's getting mm -hmm. the shields from Wisdom. The fact that they're able to play around the movement speed from those Karma Shields, repositioning himself um, in a beneficial position for the Feathers as well, it is really key. Um, but now, X7 might start playing towards a different win condition as well, which is, of course, the side lanes. Um, this traded me up 2 and 0, 220 CS to 190 mm. off the NAR. And while Sakura has itemized into a Randian's Omen, well, um, trading me on side lane is still a very disgusting champion. Still going to be able to push forward, just always having a presence is going to be very notable. And of course, taking that exhaust means that Nar doesn't have the teleport. So if you're coming in to stop Jaeger and it's not Essek who's doing it, then you're not going to have anyone in the fight. It's going to be a 4v4 when you're exchanging elsewhere. And that's before you think about, hey, maybe Tempt might want to build a side lane as well to try and cause pressure on the opposite side of the map because the Vladimir has a little bit of time to survive, but he might not survive into 2v1 situations, half health, but does manage to stay up as Nata could be there for the heal if needed. Honestly, Gamer Legion's mission pockets have been very good. In a map that have been so dominated on the mm. map state by X7, Gamer Legion have still managed to find a way to come in with some sort of vision to still keep the tracking up and going or still find these pockets where X7 are there, get forced to face check and then they find the poke onto them. Yeah, because Sing's going to be feeling that poke tomorrow as he's going to dive forward. But here comes Haru onto the side. Teleport coming on through. But now Haru's rooted up. He's in a little bit of trouble. But Nara on the other side, even more so. Haru gets killed onto Wisdom. And he's still alive, standing strong. Here comes Jaeger. The healing is disgusting. As Dank is going to be left by the wayside. Jaeger bomb on through for two. Looking for Eshik for the third. Danka is still alive. Jinjo's still alive somehow as he picks up the kill on Saraga. Haru and Kazing chasing him on the final surviving member of Gamer Legion with Danka also actually still standing somehow. Jaeger moving forward has to use the Undying Rage as Danka turns around. The remaining members of Gamer Legion are somehow fighting some effective guerrilla warfare. Pick up a couple of members for X7 take the fight. Nata is so goddamn disgusting in those team fights with all that healing to come through. There is no way in hell that Haro should have been able to live that. And I do believe they still have the healing reduction because there is a putrefier on Wisdom. So whoever he shielded, if they attack Haru, yeah, he's got Grievous Wounds on him right now. Okay, so all this healing is coming through with the Grievous Wounds on Haru. That's absolutely disgusting. You've got to remember, Wish actually gets rid of healing group, uh, Grievous Wounds. Oh yeah, they so, have that buff, you're right, that's a really the cleanse, good shout. Even if you build it, Nard's like, don't really care. He does care about the feathers as he goes down in the middle of that fight, and Danker on the side is just like, hopefully no one's going to come for me. He realizes just one person's coming for him and thinks, yeah, you know what, I can probably take that fight and we'll be able to take down Tempt on the other side as Jinjo does go down. But Gamer Legion able to pick up a little bit and slow things down for themselves. Maybe deny a Baron away from X7. But overall, the gold lead spiraling a little bit. 3,500 for X7 at the 26 minute mark. Nothing to be too worried about if you're a Gamer Legion fan. But definitely not the strongest game state to be in. Oh, most definitely not. That team fight right there might have just been the one that both teams are going to be looking back at as the one mm. that defined this game, um, especially with the 4k gold lead that X7 has now been able to accumulate for themselves. Side lane is still getting pressured by Gamer Legion though. Uh, remember, once again, no TPs from either top laner. So whoever gets to push this in and force the enemy top laner to respond to it will be having an advantage on the map. So now Gamer Legion, they get to play around a little bit with the tempo. Uh, seems like they're just going to be using this to forfeit their turn, if you can say that, and uh, go for a reset instead. I think it's just going to be able to clear out that top wave and keep your eyes on the dragon. 40 seconds until the mountain spawns. It will be soul point 
for either team if they can take this one. Not Soul, but they'll be setting themselves up with that extra added pressure um, if they can secure it. But X7 hanging around in the river. They might want to just try and catch any members of Gamer Legion looking to move towards that objective. Remember, Baron is there. Jaeger moving up to join the rest of his roster. Always a little bit late to the fight, but this time around, he's actually just going to st uh, be around the objective, starting it up if it goes 15 seconds. Tempt needs to be somewhat careful. Goes low, about half health, but can heal up as he is, of course, a vampire. Jaeger now going to clear out some vision and step on back. The Gamer Legion being pretty strong, having the better health bars moving towards his objective. Haru diving on forward, but will be denied by Nar, hurling him back as Jaeger now following through on towards Jinja. But there's Sakura and this Trindamir, very, very low, goes on Dying Rage. Nar has to come through to keep him alive there. Comes the redemption as Sakura going low, but still alive somehow. Burning runs shields to get him to safety. Tempt holding the rest of the river on his own. X7 moved towards the objective. But they don't both go towards an objective on the side of Gamer Legion. They want to go for the mid lane turret instead here. So they're mm. at least getting something off this exchange. Soul point now for X7. Gamer Legion, though, they still want some gold. They still want some pressure back into the game. And assist pings are coming on towards the Baron. I think might be looking for a pick here over from the Raptor Pit. But it's only Kasing who's within range. And Gamer Legion think, hey, there might be a reset here. Let's clear out some vision and start this one up. This could be dangerous. Staying grouped in an isolated pick, uh, pit rather, into Leona, into Velathimir. Mm. This could be dangerous. They probably have to turn it game, game of Legion. It looks like that's what they want to do. They're keeping the Baron going. No Danka, Jinjo, Visdom all still attacking the worm. But Sakura moving forward gets a nice stun onto two. Nar through the back line. Untouched though. Soraka can do so much work. Kissing in the side gets rooted but healed as well. As Haru moving forward needs to be careful. Breaks up the fight with the ultimate. Jaeger moving towards Danka looking for a kill. But he's going to be able to dive back into his team. But members from GL have started to fall. Jaeger gets the cut down onto the mid laner. Jinjo, he's got enemies to the left of him. Enemies to the right. Here I am. Stuck in the middle of the fight. Will be able to jump onto Haru but not grab the kill. Narda says, don't worry, love. I've got the heals for you. Jaeger, ghosting, chasing, slowing, slapping. Will be able to take down Bislam. It's the ace for X7 as they move towards the Baron. And that just goes to show the strength of the composition that X7 had drafted for themselves. They're able to split their opponents apart with Haru diving in with the ultimate. Then the healing coming through and the rest of the members of Gamer Legion just getting isolated for Jaeger to isolate the kills. Brilliantly, once again, from X7. They're going to be able to pick up the Baron. They have Haru on at the Tempt on the top side. And this should just be the game now for X7. That Baron, as you said, they can look to try and pressure into the base. Opening in the top side for that inhibitor may well be the option. But let's have another look at this fight. Game Legion a little bit slow to peel off. But it looks okay for a few seconds. Initially, it looks good. You know, Sakura with two good stuns on towards the wall. The problem is there's no follow-up immediately. And one of them was also the Trindimir. So if they're not able to blow up Tempt immediately, they're just not going to come anything out of it. So Tempt, he's able to flash forward, get the ultimate down together with the E, and then probably just, you know, go into the W on target wall. Haru dies forward. Then the ultimate comes out. No one can hit him. And this is just Jaeger, Jaeger rather, um, able to play for the rest of the scraps. Again, a strong, strong performance from Jaeger, who... People were questioning coming into this tournament, or more like, more realistically, people weren't really talking about coming into this tournament, but he's showing himself to be one of the premier top laners here at the Amazon European Masters. And the rest of X7 following suit, playing exceptionally well in the role. And Nartra, of course, the player, if you look down this roster, the name you might not recognize if you don't watch the NLC or don't know too much about the region, has been having an absolutely stellar performance on the Soraka. Yeah, and I mean, it's just, you can highlight every member from X7 because they are just stepping up. They are the super team coming out from the north. Jinjo gets slowed up, Dagger gets stunned up. They're going to take down the tower, so they're not fighting under the objective as Temp moves forward, but the feathers fly. But that's a big tool being wasted by Zaya. Oh, Jaeger might be caught out of position here. No ghost. Oh, he's going to get slowed up. Needs to dodge away from the charm. Will be able to do so. Nice fancy footwork from the top laner. Able to move back. X7 hanging around in the jungle. Maybe just looking to give him a little bit of support as they check towards this bot side tower. The last objective outside of the base still standing for Gamer Legion. It looks like the team from the Isle of Man wants to try and move it as fast as possible. Able to push in. They're playing on two lanes here. Mid lane was just pushed in before. So Gamer Legion, they have to apply pressure there to just at least clear the waves. But now... With this one and a half minion wave coming through a cannon in the back, maybe Gamer Legion can find their stand here. X7, they haven't been back in base for a while. They may be overstepping if they make a mistake. 
Solar Flare slows, but no stuns available. Nata is low. Remember, it costs him health to heal up his allies, except he wants to throw down the Wish, which he does have in his back pocket. The Gamer Legion are looking to chase members of X7 away from their base, just trying to put that pressure on and utilize the fact, as you mentioned, X7 haven't been back to buy or regen for a while. So it looks like that is what they're going to try and do now. Just go for the reset, drag it up in 45. They want to play for Soul. Yeah, and they already have the vision control to facilitate that. They were just playing on two lanes in the mid lane and the bot lane. So the vision right now is still towards the Drake. Um, and, you know, Gamer Legion, they're going to have to expand time clearing that while the reset is coming through from X7. When they finally get it back around the river, well, they can place their newfound vision control. They don't have too many, many members buying pink boards right now, uh, but they do have a lot of stopwatches. So these extended team fights, all Nata has to do is just stay alive, wait for his members to go into stasis, and then heal them off if they become too low. There's so many tools for X7 to win this team fight. Nice slow on to Ginger, gonna cleanse through, but now that tool isn't available. Danker's big, but can he hold the line? Jaeger moving forward on the other side. Tempt hasn't quite got to the fight yet. Night Ultimate from Sakura on to do. Essig on the other side of the fight, looking towards Kasek, but he's a tanky. Leona is gonna keep them CC'd. Tempt's already taken down Bisnam, looking towards Danker, who will be shielded up. Jinjo is there, but Jaeger and Nata can now collapse. The Volley Bear's done double for the Hemomancer as Kasek steps forward. 1v1 Essig on the side. I don't know if Leona actually manages to get the kill pressure down, Go get it, Kasing. Slowing, stunning. Kasing, you can do it. We believe another one. Zed in play. Oh, the Kasing solo kill. with the solo kill onto Essex. Start and finish with kills onto Ari as X7 will take the game. I hardly ever care about this victory. The solo kill from Kasing right there was the moment I had waiting for Haru. Back forwards. Just be able to secure the kill, the ace, the base. The game as X7 remain undefeated, going top of Group C. Another statement from the NLC champions. They're just so dominant. It was close in the beginning. It was slow from X7. But once you reach that mid-game and they start taking their fights, they're just relentless. And they've been winning games in two very different fashions. What a versatile team we have here. I mean, they're showing already that they can do it both ways. Hey, if you want a fast game where we're going to absolutely destroy our opponents, we can do that if they put up a bit more resistance. We can play slow. We know how to play towards win conditions. And for a team that wants to try and go all the way is what they've been saying. They've shown excellent opportunities to do that. And a very, very scary roster coming through these Amazon European Masters. Yeah, so far they really haven't been tested. It, it's kind of just like looking back at the NLC finals when we, we were introducing them, like Bifrost mm. in the upper bracket had tested them a little bit in the finals. They're not even tested at all. So we thought, okay, maybe when they go up against K-Corp, this is where we'll start seeing it. Didn't happen. Now today against Game Allegiance, a little bit in the early game, but outside of that, didn't happen again. Like they have just been so convincing every time in every game. I'm very excited to see how Gamer Legion do up against K-Corp in the, the next matchup, but we're not going to talk about too much. We're going to jump to a short break. When we come back, it's an interview with Kasing. But even after that, we've got our next matchup, Ego Road up against Sven and Svesda. Don't go anywhere. We'll see you in a few. Love 